Hey, what's up guys? It's Metal, Zara, and WoW. And I've been messing around with uh, some unit frames uh, that I've been making on my own with uh, basic uh, Lua add-on that is like invisible frames and then anchoring weak aura textures and functions to them. Uh, it's a little bit jank, but lots of people seem to do it and it seems to work. And you know, they're kind of like fully functional unit frames with cast bars and com point tra trackers and it's a whole thing. But anyway, as I've been on this journey of like finally figuring out how uh, some basic Lua uh, programming works in WoW, um, I came across a, a problem that I solved recently that is very simple. And it occurred to me that this is the exact kind of thing that I wish someone had made for me when I was trying to figure this out like five years ago. I feel like I could have been doing the last five years of, of, of whatever I've been doing for the last year. Um, I could have like built that all up and had so much more progress if like some very basic fundamentals have been shown had been shown to me. So uh, what I ran into is uh, my target frame. Um, you can see here it says the guy's level, right? And he's like an elite. But then, you know, it says the enemy level is 70. If I click level 70, which makes sense, it says I'm level 70. I don't really think I'm going to see anyone who's not 70 around here. But, you know, it shows the enemy's level. And if the enemy is above 70 or an elite mob like this, the game actually returns negative one. So the way I made the text, um, I'll just recreate this in a new week or to show you. Testy, texty. Um, so we'd go to trigger under like weak auras and player slash unit info. We change the unit to target and then we would change it from health to unit characteristics, which would tell us like level and whatnot. And then if we go back to display, and so here's our little weak aura in the center here. I'll move it up just so it's kind of up there. Um, if we go back to display, it's currently set to percent P for the display, which is progress, obviously. But since we changed it, to unit characteristics, uh, we can do percent one dot level now. And so there's our negative one, which is really, really tiny. So I'll just make it super big. So there, there's our negative one, right? Like that is it uh, telling us our, our target's level. So if I click myself, it's 70. And if I click Again, another player, it's 70. And I, and I promise this works for things that aren't 70. There's just no one around who's not 70 because we're in Veldraken. But there's this guy. And he's level negative one. And he's, man, he's just, he's really, uh, he's really getting tanked right now. Anyway, so he's level negative one. Uh, but I don't want that because that's weird. It's jank. You're like, what's level negative one? Apparently that's literally what an elite is. So there's nothing that I know of in weak auras that actually allows you to do that uh, completely within the weak auras interface, but weak auras do allow you to use custom functions. So the first thing that I wish someone had told me was just how to use a custom function uh, at all. Uh, and so to get it to even show up in the displays, uh, you change it from this to a custom, uh, percent %c, and then this custom function box appears, which I guess it's fine that it hides, but I've had like weak where I couldn't figure out, like I didn't know what percent C was way back when. I'm like, what is percent C? And like, it's easier now because they have this little fly out that they didn't used to have, but they didn't used to. And you just had to like know that. So anyway, when you type percent C, it gives you uh, this custom function. So then um, the first thing we want to do is write a function. And I looked up a lot of stuff on basic functions in Lua. And I figured out like, you know, you write like function that and then end and then like everything you put you know in between is whatever your function is right which if if you're like me you figured that out pretty quick it's a quick google you know google lua function and then you're like okay well i get it but what always <laughs> confused me was i was like well how do i how do i like make the weak aura do whatever the function did and 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 it evidently is just return uh, and you can return it uh, as whatever that data is. So, like, if we wanted to uh, change this level, you might have looked up, um, you can Google, like, WoW API level, right? And you can find in the WoW API under WoWpedia or whatever other site, literally just Google, like, WoW API level. 
And then Fandom is like the old one. People say you're supposed to use Wapedia because I guess it's newer and they moved, but it's usually still Fandom is at the top. Both these have stuff. Uh, Wapedia is newer. So Fandom's older, Wapedia is newer. But basically, you can see here, like, these examples. So then you're like, oh, okay. So all I have to do to get the unit level is define a variable, which they're just making up level, right? So you could be like, uh, test demo level equals unit level, right? Or unit, unit underscore? No, it's autocompleting. Unit level unit. So unit level and then target. And so target would be our target. That's just another thing built into the API of WoW. So that's going to give us the level, and that's basically what the little checkbox does. But you'll notice if you close it, it doesn't actually do anything. And this was the first thing, again, that really tripped me up. I was like, how do I do that? And, and you just do return your, your variable. And I'm sure there are lots of people who this is super simple to. <laughs> I am a, a, a graphic designer, front-end CSS nerd, not a coding nerd. So this wasn't apparent to me. So you can see now it's returning the correct level. So we have just programmed the target level checkbox that we clicked, right? Um, so we're saying define, we, we made up test demo level and we defined it as something that was set in the API, which is this unit level, which has its own little uh, variables to it. So target being one. And then we just say return that variable. And that's the whole function. And if we hear return it, it shows up. So this for me was the hardest part because I, I feel like the rest of it I could all conceptualize because it's like I know what an if statement is. I know what, you know, generally loops are and things like that. And even if, even if you don't, you could Google them and I feel like you could understand them. But it was just really hard for me to see like, and I understand like this works in Lua, but I, I was, it wasn't readily apparent to me that it, it worked the same way within weak auras. I thought maybe there might be something specific to weak auras. I don't know. But anyway, now that we have that, um, we can just do like a simple if statement. So I can do like if um, test demo level equals. And so in Lua, you do equals equals to test for. Um, so like equals is you defining that something does exist. So you're saying test demo level is now this. Equals equals is you saying does it exist this. And so we can say if it, if it does exist as negative one, then we want to redefine it. And so now we're going to say equals single. And then we're going to do quotes because this is a string of just characters. So we'll do quotes plus question, question. Um, and then we want to end our if statement. And that's it. So now if uh, anything that is our target is not negative one it tells us what level that is and if it is negative one it says plus plus or plus question question but you know you could make that whatever you want because it's just a string you could be like oh my god elite run big rock so that's pretty cool um at any rate it wasn't apparent to me that that functions um I knew you could do functions within weak auras. It wasn't apparent to me that you literally just did like return variable and it would just do that. So that's kind of the first part uh, that I just wanted to talk about because yeah, words. You can tell I didn't write a script. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the weak aura, uh, the weak aura hostile versus friendly checks. So I have like um, in my little weak aura unit frames that I'm making, I've got a target health bar. And one of my triggers in the weak aura is just check whether it's hostile, right? And another one is check whether it's friendly. And so I have any triggers, which means like any of these triggers will trigger this weak aura. And then I conditionally go in and I say, hey, if trigger two active, trigger two being is the unit hostile, then make it red. And then I have if trigger three active, trigger three being is the unit friendly, then make it green. 
And so that's what, like, you know, when we click a dummy or whatever, it would turn it red. But you'll notice they're currently turning yellow. Um, and I have other conditionals for, like, um, classes. These are all just conditional colors. There's no coding. It's all just the weak or as um, gooey. But you'll notice mine are actually turning yellow. And they don't actually do that by default because there is no weak aura determination for a neutral unit. So this was one that really threw me for a loop. It doesn't really hurt anything to run around and, and have all of your... Uh, like, these would all be red normally. You can see they're red when I reload weak auras because the conditions the conditions only work after you retarget. Um, it wouldn't hurt for them to be red, right? But it's also just kind of like, I don't know, they should be yellow. They're neutral. So to do that, um, it's actually a lot goofier than you would expect because I would have thought that, yeah, there would just be like a neutral drop down, but there isn't. Uh, so... Uh, you need to make a custom trigger. And now that we know how functions can return things, um, and I had done, just before learning this part, I had done the level text that I that I started with. And I was like, well, wait, now that I can return a function, I think triggers are probably the same way. So um, if you create a trigger and you change it from a type of, you know, or whatever, just to custom, you can then pick an event type and so there are event types that are in the WoW API. Um, and so again, you would Google WoW events that are relevant to what you're trying to find. So in this case, I would want to check the event player target changed. This is just a built-in thing with the WoW API. And this is just saying every time the player's target changes, do this thing. And that's very easy for this because obviously every time we get a new target, every time our target changes, we want to check whether or not it is hostile, friendly, or neutral. Okay? So... Um, you can put that in for your event, and that's one of the defaults that they suggest, so even better. And you can see they have auto-completes in the weak or as GUI now, which makes it, like, even easier to just kind of, like, guess around. But again, you can always Google, like, WoW API player target change event, or some random thing, and see if there's an event for it. And there, there, there might be. <laughs> that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother topic, how easy or hard it is to Google things that are kind of basic. So then, if we look at my, um my trigger function here. I've got a custom trigger and a custom untrigger. And so this was another thing that I had to Google because um, this is just a lot of what happened. So it's like, wow, API unit reactions. Yeah. Here we go. Boop. So in the API, there are these unit reactions and there's all of these different hostilities and I find this to be so funny because, like, in my head, there are only three types of units in WoW, right? There's a hostile unit, there's a friendly unit, and there's a neutral unit. But apparently they have all this, like, legacy crap from, I guess it's, like, old Scryer's reputation from, you know, BC or something. But anyway, all we really care about is neutral. So I think now that you looked at the last function that we did, uh, you can see exactly how this works, right? So, again, this is, like, something in the API. So I'm just defining the variable reaction. And it's unit reaction, and then uh, again defined as in as it is in the API. This is saying the target to the player. So how is the target slot one to the player? But if you inverted this, it would be how is the player to the target, um, or how is the the focus to the player, or whatever other unit. So basically, we're saying what is the target's reaction to the player, and then we're just doing a simple if statement. That's if the reaction definitely equals four which again is neutral. And this is where I was like, well, how do I make it yellow? And, or how do I do whatever script that I want? And there's probably a more complicated way that you could do this, but you can just say return true. Because now this is us telling weak auras that this trigger is true. And we could even do an else if return true or else if return false, but we don't need to program the return false um, because it's implied, right? Um, Basically, it would be saying, like, not active. But return true is just that the trigger's active. So now this is a custom trigger that says, if the unit's reaction is 4, then this trigger is active. So from there, I can go into my conditions, and exactly the same way I said if trigger 2 or 3 are active for friendly or hostile units within the GUI where I selected, 
unit hostility hostile. Now I can make a conditional that is trigger four custom active true. And so that is my custom trigger for um, for the neutral unit. And then the next thing I realized right after I did that was that while it was working and that was really exciting, it wasn't changing the color back. So like once it made, once I clicked one neutral unit, every unit was neutral. It was no longer doing like class colors or red. So I was like, well, crap, how do I do an untrigger? Right? Um, and I'm gonna delete this little sample one I was doing. So I was like, how do I do an untrigger? And the untrigger is the exact same idea. It's just that you are triggering it to turn off. So if we go into the untrigger, the custom untrigger, uh, it's local reaction. It's the exact same code. And then we're saying if the unit doesn't equal four, return true. And this, again, I mean, I guess logically, if you really think about it, it makes sense. But at first I was like, hey, return false because... It's false, and it, it's it's an untrigger, false, but it, it's not, the untrigger is true, right? So then when it reads true in the untrigger section, it is now canceling whatever that trigger effect was up above. Um, so yeah, I thought this was like pretty cool. Um, I also wrote one after learning how to do that for unit affecting combat, which changes it to be, um, and I don't think it works with test dummies because they don't attack me, but I could be wrong. Yeah, doesn't work with test dummies. But if I go attack like a, um, if I go attack like a neutral unit in the world, I'll go fly down to one really quick. Um, this script will make them, uh, will make them turn red, even though, you know, they're they're technically neutral to me. And I am just the most combat locked person who's ever lived. God, I love this game. Sometimes there we go. Okay, training dummies. So we'll go down here and find some neutral units really quick. So you can see what I mean. Uh, yeah, so here's like this guy, and he's neutral, right? But if I hit him... <laughs> if I don't one-shot him with my ridiculously overgeared character at the end of an expansion... Let's try this frog. I'm going to taunt him. So once he initiates actual combat with me, he's red now. So it takes a second, because he's got to like... Actually, like when I taunt, he's not immediately in combat because he hasn't hit me or anything. But, like, now he's red, um, even though he would normally be yellow. And he'll just stay red because he's forever in combat with me. So it's pretty cool because it's the exact same concept. I don't know if I'll one-shot this guy or not. Let's just judge him. Bonk. So he's red right away. So it's like as soon as you hit him or he hits you, basically the game's like, hey, you're in combat. Um, and so that code, it, it uses the exact same concept. Uh, so this is just another custom trigger that I added. Now the event is unit combat, which again is just an, an API thing that's built into the game. You just find that and trigger it off of that. And then, um, and this this could be done like unit combat, like player. It's another thing just built into the game. I, I honestly don't know if it should be player or target. I just left it as unit combat because that does any relevant uh, unit. And it was kind of buggy when I just did one or the other. So, you know, maybe that's not the best, best way, but it, it absolutely works. Um, and then the, the, the custom function is the same concept where it's, uh, here's your variable, right? And then again, this is an API string that you can look up. That's like, wow, API, how are units in combat? And then you can see here, it's selecting the target unit. So meaning whatever you have targeted. And then if this variable is true, then return true. And if this variable on the untrigger is false, then return true. So from there, we have another conditional, and that's this last one here. That says, if trigger 5 is active, make them red. So anyway, uh, I have uh, very little programming experience. Um, lots of HTML and CSS experience and Photoshop experience. And video editing experience, but no programming experience until the last, like, maybe year and a half or so. And uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is not a bragging video. This is a video that hopefully, if you are like me, and you're really struggling to get a foothold in how some of this stuff works, I think starting with weak auras and learning some very basic Lua to insert into weak auras is an awesome way to figure that out. Um, I'm not going to go over how I created the invisible frames that my unit frames anchor to in this video, but um, if you guys think this is neat or if I'm sufficiently bored, maybe I will do that as well. See ya!